Many of my Muslim viewers have asked me to do a video on Sheikh Uthman ibn Farouk. And I'm going to take a look at a video that he did where he's teaching Dawah to fellow Muslims. Now he's teaching to a crowd of Muslims and the video was directed at Muslims. And he uses an argument <laughs> that is quite often thrown out there on the internet and I've seen it in my YouTube comments. And this argument came about when Muslims started hearing from Christians that Muhammad married a child and consummated the marriage with a child. And when Muslims, apologists and leaders started hearing the feedback, mostly from Christians, telling other Muslims the truth, and we will see that this argument is a total fabrication, a total lie. Now, how do Muslim Dawah apologists get away with this? Well, it's probably because 99% of their Muslim audience doesn't take the time to look up and check behind what their Dawah leaders are saying is true or not. And the other group of Muslims just don't care even if it is a lie because Uthman is on Team Muhammad. So let's play this clip and see if you can spot the lie from Ibn Farouk. You guys writing this down? Good. So, oh, okay. He tells us to take notes and check behind him. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. Sarah was 90 years old when Abraham was 100. All right. Sarah was how old? 90. 90. When Abraham was? And this is in Genesis 1717. Okay. Genesis 1717. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Sarah's 90. Ibrahim salam, or Abraham was 100 when Isaac or Ishaq was born. How old was he? 100 when Isaac was born in accordance to Genesis 21.5. Genesis 21.5. Okay. okay, Genesis 21.5. Okay, yeah, Abraham was 100. Sarah died at the age of 127, according to Genesis 23, 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2. How old was she? 127 years of age when she died, according to Genesis. Not according to Islam, just talking about the Bible here. Genesis 23, verses 1 and 2. Okay, Genesis 23, 1 and 2. Yeah, we see that uh, she was 127 when she died. Okay, that checks out. Isaac, Ishaq, السلام, was 40 years old when he married Rebecca in accordance to Genesis 25-20. How old was he? 40. According to Genesis 25-20, giving you evidences for all of these. Okay, Genesis 25, 20 was 40. Okay, so, so far, so good for Mr. Farouk. Giving you evidences for all of these. Sarah was 90 when Ishaq was born. How do we know that? Concluding from 1 and 2. If Sarah was 90 when Abraham was 100, and Abraham was 100 when Isaac was born, then how old was Sarah when Isaac was born? 90, right? Very clear. Ishaq or Isaac was 37 when his mother died because 127 minus 90 equals what? 37. You guys with me? You with me or no? You see the clear verses? Okay. You lost track? In number 3 that I mentioned, Sarah died at? 127. And she was how old when Isaac was born? 90. 90. So if you subtract 90 from 127, what do you get? 37. 37. So that means Isaac, according to the Bible, was 37 when his mother Sarah died. Okay, okay. That math adds up. Since Isaac was 37 when his mother died, and he was 37 when Rebecca was born, right? 
So there is the big lie. Did you catch it? But guess what? There is absolutely no verse, zero verse that says that. Did you notice he gave references for all of his other points, but then he just throws this one out there because there is no verse that says this. It's a total fabrication. It's a total lie. It doesn't exist. Hey, all you Uthman fanboys out there, why don't you tell me what verse says that Isaac was 37 when Rebecca was born? I want those ages. I want those dates. Put it in the comment section. Show me. So if you think you have the answer, Uthman fanboys, put it in my comment section. Because Rebecca was born when Sarah died. So there's lie number two. <laughs> Nowhere does it say in the Bible that Rebecca was born when Sarah died. Another total lie. Another total fabrication. Now please notice he gives data points and then he gives the references from the Bible. This is his big argument that the Bible teaches that Rebecca was three and Isaac was 40 when they got married. This is his claim and he claims it comes from the Bible. But yet those two major points he has no references for. Why? Because they don't exist. No verse anywhere says that Isaac was 37 when Rebecca was born or that Rebecca was born when Sarah died. It doesn't exist. It's just not there. It's a total lie. And we can see that Sheikh Uthman is living up to his nickname, Ibn Fibbin. So, what does that mean? That means that Isaac was 40 when he married Rebecca. Huh? How old was he when she was born? 40. 37. He married her at 40. Huh? So Rebecca would be how old? Three years old. It's all verses from the Bible itself. Okay, that's the last biggest lie to top off the whole thing. And he says that Isaac was 40 and Rebecca was 3 when they got married. But it's not in the Bible. It's not there. All those references he gave, adding up all those ages, subtracting eight, all that was a bunch of mess. Okay? If you follow his data points, he gives none for his conclusion. Zero. Ibn Ben Fibbin. This argument is a total lie. Now, the Bible does not even say how old Rebecca was when she married Isaac. But I can show you without a doubt that the Bible demonstrates that she was definitely not three years old. And we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 24 to prove once and for all that Ibn's been fibbing. <laughs> He's lying. Okay, so Abraham is sending his servant to go find a wife for his son Isaac. Now this is the context of the following scriptures. Uh, let's read verse 5. The servant asked him, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Did you catch that? That says woman, not child, not baby, not toddler, not a three-year-old. It says a woman. Now take a look at verse 8. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. So there it is, two verses that say that Abraham sent his servant to find a woman for Isaac to marry. Not a toddler, not a baby, not a child, but a woman. Now let's go down a little further. Verse 14 says this. May it be that when I say to a young woman, there it is again, he is seeking a woman, a young woman, not a baby, not a toddler, not a child. So now, Abraham's servant has come to a group of people. And they're looking for a wife for Isaac, a woman, not a child, not a baby. And while they're there, they've made a long journey. And this young woman, this woman, does this 
while they're there. Verse 15 says this, Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The woman, to see verse 16, the woman was very beautiful and a virgin, and no man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filling her jar, and came up again. Now, I'm going to ask you Muslims, how can a three-year-old girl do all of this work? <laughs> Friends here says that she is a woman, not a baby, not a toddler, not a three-year-old child. So this makes it clear that she was not a baby. She was not a toddler. She was not three years old. How could a three-year-old little girl carry a jar on her shoulder and water 10 camels? Now, I've been to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia to preach the gospel. And I visited a, visited a family of Mongolian camel herders that lived in the Gobi Desert. And they had lots of camels, and they don't drink often, but when camels do drink, they drink a lot. I've witnessed this. Dozens of gallons of water apiece camels can drink. And you're telling me that a three-year-old girl carried all of these gallons of jars to ten camels. Not just one, but ten. There is absolutely no way that a three-year-old could do this unless she was Baby Wonder Woman. Now, why would Sheikh Uthman continue? He didn't come up with this argument, but why does he continue to propagate the lie? He gives his motivation for telling this lie. So if you want to talk about child marriages, let's talk about it. This is something to keep in your da'wah tool. If somebody, Christians, bring up the age of Aisha radiyanha, tell them, okay, let's talk about the Bible. Islam is built upon lies. That's the point. Ibn Fibbin, Farouk, <laughs> Sheikh Uthman, and his cohorts, all of the da'wah guys, use deception, use lying to try to deceive people into believing that Islam is true and to bring in more people to believe in Islam. And what they do is they lie not only to their fellow Muslims. How does that make you feel, by the way, my dear Muslim friends watching this video, that Uthman directly lies to your face? How does that make you feel? But he does this because he knows that the damage has been done, that people are finding out that Muhammad consummated a marriage with a child. And that's just flat out disgusting. And even Muslims understand that that's disgusting and vile and sinful. And it's causing them to lose faith in Islam. So what they do is they point the finger and say, Hey, not what about Rebecca? What about Isaac? The argument doesn't work. It's, number one, it's a flat out lie. And number two, if, if Isaac had slept with a three-year-old, guess what? Christians would condemn it. We would say that's vile, that's evil, because we're not in the box that you Muslims are that say that prophets did no sin. So we're not in that. In fact, David was a murderer, and we're not ashamed to say that David killed a dude, right? And we say that that was wrong. And another thing is Isaac is not our example. We are not Isaac Ischians, or however you would say it. We do not follow Isaac, or Rebecca for that matter. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And He is our example. And you're stuck with your example because your Quran says that Muhammad was the greatest example of conduct of any human that has ever lived. And your prophet had sex with a child. You're stuck with that truth. And the biggest lie told in Islam is, is this that Jesus is not Lord, that He didn't die on a cross, and He didn't rise from the dead. That is the biggest lie in Islam, and that's the lie that keeps Muslims from coming to the true one and only God. 
And these lies are directed at Muslims to keep them trapped in Islam and not to profess the truth that Jesus did die on the cross. He did rise from the dead and He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Master. He is Savior. He is the Great I Am. He is Jehovah God in the flesh. And that Jesus Christ, my dear Muslim friends, died for your sin so you could be reconciled to the one and only true God through Jesus Christ, the divine Son of God. Now what you must do, my dear Muslim friends, is realize that you've been sold a bill of goods. You've been sold a bunch of lies by Sheikh Uthman and other Muslim leaders. And you have to have the courage to repent. Once you know the truth, you've heard the truth, that Jesus is Lord, He did die on a cross, and He did rise from the dead. Now, what you must do is have the courage to turn away from Muhammad, turn away from Islam, and trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and start following Him. My dear Muslim friends, if you do that today, you will never regret it.